بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah most gracious ever merciful we once again thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this favor he has granted us with to be with our, in our midst is our ustaz our noble ustaz Abu Musa Rahabat we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him success in his speech to continue on the commentary on the book Kitab al-Tawheed of the noble Imam al-Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, Mr. Nivan al-Tamimi, rahimahullah. Please, the Fadl, Sheikh and Mashkuran. Barakallahu feekum. Wa feekum barak. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah wa ba'd. So we continue where we left off in the commentary of the Sheikh al-Alam al-Ubaid al-Jabri, hafidhahullah wa upon Kitab al-Tawheed by Shaykh al-Salaam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. And in the last two lessons, we uh, discussed between the author's biography as well as the title of the book, Kitab al-Tawheed, and what is intended by these two words individually, what is intended, or what is intended when you bring them together, as well as some of the text by way of which the author made at a stidlal uh, by way of which he uh, or which he utilized evidences for the subject um in the last sitting we began discussing the aspects of a tawheed and we discussed the affair of rububiya and uh there should have been an image uh, uh, a picture that was sent to the telegram channel um, which is very beneficial, ta'ala, something which we made uh, for the Marquez of uh, Ibn Qayyim that is overseen by our Sheikh Khalid Abdul Fairi, uh, based upon uh, one of his lessons uh, in the book Qawad al Arba. And uh, what is inside of that image, inshallah, ta'ala, we're going to uh, speak about something from that in this lesson. Uh, so we pick up today mentioning the second aspect of a tawheed, or the second type of aspect of a tawheed, and that is tawheed al uluhiya Tawheed al uluhiya So Sha'abayi mentions when you summa tawheed al ibadah, it is also referred to as tawheed al ibadah. Tawheed al ibadah, or the tawheed of worship. He says, Wahada huwa mahalun niza wal khusuma. And this aspect of a tawheed, this is the point of contention and dispute between the prophets and their nations. Because the tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's lordship, there was never any contention or dispute between the prophets and their nations regarding this. And this is because uh, even uh the disbelievers they affirm the tawheed of allah's lordship and allah Azzawajal informs us of this inside of his book if you were to ask them ask the Quraysh who created uh this who created that they will surely say allah you ask them who is the lord of the seven heavens lord of the magnificent throne they're going to say oh that belongs to allah so this was not a point of contention between our prophet alayhi wasalam, and his ummah and likewise it was not a point of contention between the, the previous prophets and their peoples but the point of contention between the prophets and their peoples was always Tawheed al-Uluhiya, known as Tawheed al-Ibadah, the oneness of Allah Ta'ala's worship. Now, so he says that, Now, فَهَذَا لَا يُقَرِّرُهُ عَفْوًا Now, وَبِهَذَا تَعْلَمُونَ فُحْشْ خَطَى مَنْ قَرَّرَ أَنَّ الْإِخْتِلَافَ بَيْنَ نَبِيِّينَ وَأُمَمِيهِمْ by way of this, you know, the repugnant error, the repugnant mistake of the individual who says that the point of contention, the differing between the prophets and their peoples was Tawheed or Rububiyyah. This is a repugnant and evil statement. It is not correct. No one would say this statement except an ignorant person. Bal, wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi, inna. He says, and by Allah, the old ladies amongst us, our old ladies, 
are more knowledgeable and have more fiqh and understanding of tawheed than a person who would make such a statement. He says, so because an old lady amongst our old ladies would never say that the khilaf between the prophets and their nations or their peoples was in the lordship of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Meaning that the old ladies amongst our people, amongst the people of Sunnah, who listen to and sit with the people of knowledge. Those who listen to and sit with the people of knowledge will, will never say a, say a statement like this, much less uh, someone who uh, ascribes himself to him. But you find statements like this coming from the people of Talala, the people of misguidance. And, and uh, saying that the point of contention between the prophets and the nations was in the rububi of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you ask them, what is the meaning of la ilaha illallah, they say la khaliq illallah, la raziq illallah. There is no creator except Allah. There is no one that provides except Allah. They say that this is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. When this in reality is nothing but lordship. This is lordship. Because from the aspect of lordship, as we heard in the last lesson, is khalq is creation, mudabbir, and management and control. And from management and control is يعني, rizq, giving provisions and the likes. So he says that those old ladies amongst the people of Sunnah who listen to the people of knowledge and sit with the people of knowledge will never say such a statement. Because each of these two, these two types of tawheed, the tawheed of Allah's lordship and that of Allah's worship, this is that upon which Allah Ta'ala took the covenant amongst the, upon the children of Adam. And he is referring to when uh, we were within the salb and the, we were still within the spinal column of our father Adam and Allah Ta'ala, he brought out all of the offspring of the children of, uh, all of the offspring of Adam and he asked them, am I your Lord? And they confirmed that with Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala they confirm the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Like Nusiyah, Tawheed, al uluhiyah however, the oneness of Allah Ta'ala's worship was forgotten about. It was forgotten about. And for this reason, Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala sent the prophets and messengers. Because they, to, to, you know, the people have forgotten about this affair. They still had within them, in their fitra, the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal's lordship, but they forgot about the affair of the worship of Allah wa ta'ala alone. And so for this reason, Allah ta'ala, he did what? He sent the prophets, mubashirina wa mundirin, as bringers of glad tidings and warners, wa da'ina ilayh, and callers to Allah wa ta'ala, wa baqiya tawheed al-rububiyya marakuz and fil fitr. And the tawheed of Allah ta'ala's lordship remained firmly embedded and fixed in the fitr, and in the natural dispositions of the people. Uh, now, as we mentioned earlier, even the most ardent of disbelievers, the pagans of the Quraysh, and they had within them this affair of the affirmation of Allah's lordship. They understood that there was no creator except Allah Ta'ala. Now, he says, وَبِهَذَا تَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ الْإِقْرَارِ الرُّبُوبِيَّ لَمْ يُرْخِلْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ By way of this, you know that simple affirmation of Allah's lordship does not enter a person into a, into Al Islam, a person that beca doesn't become Muslim by way of that. They don't become Muslim by way of uh, affirming that Allah created them. Now, and the evidence for that, the evidence for the fact that a uh, simple affirmation of Allah's lordship does not enter into an into a person into Al Islam, is the fact that the mention of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought against the pagans of the Quraysh and whoever followed their religion. He fought against them. And so where that is an evidence that you know, any lordship alone does not enter a person into an Islam. Abedi continues, what's the haladi ma'ahum? And he declared their blood and their property to be halal because they rejected the Tawheed al uluhiyah They rejected the Tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's worship. 
a thalith, the third aspect of a tawheed is tawheed al asma wa sifat. Tawheed al asma wa sifat. These two aspects of tawheed the tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's worship and the tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's names and attributes, these two are the aspect of tawheed the majority of the people go astray in. They go astray as it relates to Allah's names and qualities. And they likewise go astray as it relates to Allah Ta'ala's right to be worshipped alone. The khulasa and the summary of this, uh, this aspect of at tawheed الْإِمَانُ بِكُلِّ مَا وَصَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ فِي كِتَابِهِ أَوْ وَصَفَ بِهِ رَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي مَا صَحَ بِهِ النَّقْلْ عَنْهُ It is to believe in everything that Allah Ta'ala described himself with inside of his book or that which his messenger عليه وسلم described him with and that which is authentically narrated and reported from him عليه وسلم وَاتِقَاد أَنَّ ذَلِكَ حَقٌ وَصِدْقٌ and to affirm that that is the truth, and it is true. وَصِيَانَةُ ذَلِكَ مِنَ التَّحْرِيفِ وَتَأْوِيلِ وَتَعْتِيلِ وَتَفْيِفِ وَتَمْثِيلِ And to safeguard all of that from these affairs, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah likewise mentioned in his in his Al-Aqid al that you safeguard it from a tahrif, from distortion. He likewise mentioned in Ta'til, which is synonymous for tahrif, and giving it false interpretations. But ta'atil, which is negation of that, with taqyif, asking how, going into the howness of these attributes, with tamthil, anthropomorphism, likening them, likening them to the attributes of the creation. وَلِكُلٍ مِنْ تَوْهِيلَ أُلُوهِيَ وَالْأَسْمَامُ الصِّفَاتِ بَسْطٌ فِي مَوْضِئِهِ InshaAllah. And it, for each of these two affairs, the tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's right to be worshipped alone, and the tawheed of al-asmamu sifat that is lengthy speech in its proper place, inshallah ta'ala. Quran'uniya a'immatu al-islami a'inayatan azimatan bibasti al-qawli fi hadayna tawhidayn. And the imams of al-islam have taken care to speak at length regarding these two aspects of al-tawheed. Yani, uh, from the best of that which I have seen in, in Allah Ta'ala's best in, this, in the field of Tawheed, Asma wa Sifat. It's the book by Sheikh, by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al uh Al Qawad al Mutla fi Sifat Allah Ta'ala wa Asma'ihi al Husna, or the exemplary principles regarding the uh, lofty attributes and beautiful names of Allah Ta'ala. Uh, it has been translated by uh, Ustad Musa Richardson and published by our brothers at Troy. Uh, and you can find that, inshallah ta'ala, on any uh, of the Salafi platforms. At any rate, um, he mentions that the scholars they've given great care to speak at length regarding these two issues. That And this is because there's contention in them. Yani the people of Batan, yani as it relates to these two aspects of Tawheed, they've launched attacks upon them. And those who and who seek to safeguard them. And so the scholars, they, and they speak at length regarding these issues, clarifying and refuting the people of, of innovation and deviation uh, in these issues. Now, he says, Even amongst those who ascribe to al-Islam, because a majority, a large majority of people who ascribe to Al-Islam, they, you know, they have caused corruption in the affair of Tawheed Al-Islam wa Sifat, meaning they don't understand these affairs properly. They don't understand the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal properly. So either they uh, negate some or all of Allah Ta'ala's uh, attributes, such as you find with the Jahmiyyah and the Asha'ira and other than them, or you know, they... Uh, Yani they make they liken the attributes of Allah Azawajal to the attributes of his creation, like you find with the Mushabbiha and other than them, or the extreme Sufis. Now, or they name uh, uh, the creation of Allah Azawajal and describe the creation of Allah Azawajal with names and attributes that are only befitting of Allah wa Ta'ala. And so a great majority of people don't understand this aspect of it till he properly. 
and especially in this day and time. Now, and another another large majority of people, they have caused corruption and have deviated as it relates to the Tawheed of Allah's Uluhiyah, Allah's right to be worshipped alone. وَكِيلَ سَنْفَيْنِ حَرَبٌ عَلَىٰ أَحْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ And each of these two groups, they have war with أَحْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ وَلِهَابَ تَصَدَّ أَلَا إِمَّا لِرَدِّ أَبَاتِيلْ هَاؤُلَىٰ And due to this, the Imams of the religion, they have stood in, in repudiation and refutation of the falsehood of these groups. And likewise, to rebut and put down their doubts and to yani, uh, to eradicate their arguments by way of evidences and proofs meaning from the kitab of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah and the qual of the salaf of his ummah proving and indicating that each of these two groups meaning the people who deviate as it relates to Allah's worship so they, you know, they, they may affirm the Lordship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that Allah is the Creator, but they give du'a to those who are dead inside of graves, and they, uh, they slaughter for the sake of inhabitants of graves, and they make vows for the sake of inhabitants in graves, and other than that, from the various types and manifestations of, my, of, of polytheism, uh, indicating that they have gone astray in this regard of al uluhiyah or they, they err and make mistakes in the names and qualities of Allah Ta'ala, the likes of that which we already mentioned. Ahl Sunnah rebutted both of these two groups. And they intended by way of that to protect, to protect and safeguard Ahl Sunnah from the deviations of each of these groups. And the Ahl Sunnah and by way of this, you know, by way of this, it becomes clear to you that whenever the scholars of Ahl Sunnah rebut a mistake, whenever they refute an error, they don't intend by way of that the person who made the mistake. This is not their focus. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter who made the mistake. If it's a mistake, it's a mistake. If it's wrong, it's just wrong. If it's wrong, it's just wrong. Now, so they don't intend by way of that to personally attack the person who made the mistake. Now, I'm saying that, oh, okay, since it's so-and-so, we must rebut him. It's Ali, what's back to him. It's this person, so we must refute that person because just simply because it's him. No. Auli ennahu min qutar kada, or because he is from so-and-so place. He's from Yemen, or he's from this place, or he's from that place. He's from Iraq, or he's from Sham. So therefore, we must rebut the Shami. You must rebut and refute anybody who comes out of Iraq and so on and so forth. Now, they don't intend that. He says, They intend by way of that to set up a barrier, to set up a protective barrier between this errant person, this deviant who was astray, leading others astray, they want to set the scholars want to set up a barrier between him, a protective barrier between him and the Muslims. Had to be called at today on Kullo Hulillahi Khalisan Al Khalisan Allah, so that all religiosity and worship can be purely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla alone. As for the connection, and here's where this uh, this this image uh, that should have been sent to the Telegram channel comes in. There's a connection between these two aspects of Tawheed. Meaning between the the uh, between lordship of Allah Taala and the uluhi or the worship of Allah Taala, there's a, a, a connection between them. And if you look at the image, you'll see the connection highlighted there. So that there's a connection between yani, lordship of Allah Taala and the and the uh, and and the right of Allah Taala to be worshipped alone. And there's a connection between yani, likewise. The names and qualities of Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala's right to be worshipped alone. Faladi Warafnahu an Aimati. A sunnah that which we have inherited from the people of Sunnah is that the Tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's Lordship makes binding Mustalzim li Tawheed al Uluhiyah. It makes binding the Tawheed of Allah Ta'ala's Uluhiyah. 
فمن أقر بربوبية الله تعالى So therefore he who affirms the Lordship of Allah Ta'ala it is likewise obligatory upon that person to affirm the, the right of Allah, Allah to be worshipped alone. Meaning that if you affirm that Allah Ta'ala created you by himself, you affirm that Allah provides for you by himself, you affirm that Allah Ta'ala manages and controls the creation high and low, he alone is the giver of life. He alone is the cause of death. You affirm all of this, which is from the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, then, uh, then the affirmation of that makes binding upon you that you single Allah, 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 Allah Azza wa Jal out in worship. Now, he said, and likewise, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya mutadam mean only Tawheed al rububiya and the connection between Tawheed al-Uluhiyya and the Lordship of Allah Azza wa is that Tawheed al-Uluhiyya mutadamminun it contains and comprises inside of it the affirmation of Allah's Lordship. For the qala qailun ashhadu in la ilaha illallah so if a person were to say for example I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah how he says la ma'abudi haqqin illallah there's no true object of worship except Allah then the statement of his, it comprises inside of it, singling out Allah Azza wa Jal in worship, just as it comprises singling out Allah Azza wa Jal in lordship. Amma tawhi asma wa sifah, fa innahu ma'ani, or min ma'ani, rubiyatullah. As for the tawheed of Allah's names and attributes, it is from the ma'ani, it is from yani, those things that branch off from Tawheed of Allah's Lordship. It is from the meanings of Tawheed of Allah's Lordship. So after all of this, after this introductory speech, we find that the, that the Musannaf, he traversed upon two paths in clarifying this issue and explaining them. And the first path that he traversed upon, al istidlal ala is clarifying the fact that the creation, the two classes of jinn and mankind, they were created for one purpose only. And that is what? To worship Allah Ta'ala alone. And he mentioned under that the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and mankind except to worship me. This is the sole purpose for which we were created. It's the sole purpose for which we were created. So, uh, Yani, the Sheikh is highlighting here how under the title of the chapter, the first verse that was mentioned was this. This is his istidlaab. Yani, the way that he uh, yani, proved and established his point. al like thani the second path he traversed upon is the removal of doubts. The removal of doubts. The removal of doubts. And it is that a person may say, that perhaps a person does worship Allah. All right? A person may come along and say, okay, I worship Allah. I do worship Allah, so I'm good, I'm safe, I'm Muslim. But they may think that it is permissible while they are worshipping Allah Ta'ala to worship other than him along with him. For they call Adda Ibadatullah, Ya'ni Yunkin al Mar. And so therefore he says that this person has fulfilled the worship of Allah Ta'ala, meaning that he worshiped Allah, so he prays for the sake of Allah, fast for the sake of Allah, he gives the cat for the sake of Allah, but he worships other than Allah along with him, and therefore makes dua to other than Allah. And he vows for other than Allah. And he makes istighatha, seeking salvation from other than Allah. And those things that none but Allah Ta'ala has the capability of. And so, this is how these doubts come. And may Allah Ta'ala protect us and you from doubts. So the author, yani the second path he traversed upon inside of this book, is that he repelled these doubts by way of many verses that come after and those verses are going to come later, inshallah ta'ala. And so, the kalam ala al-ayah, alati sadara 
بهذا المصنف من أوجه speech by way of which the author uh, يعني commits his book uh, I mean speech by, upon the verse rather by way of which the author began his book is from a number of angles and the, and the, and the verse the, the verse that we're referring to is the verse in Surah Adhariyat verse 56 I have not created the jinn or mankind except to worship me so speech is by way of a number of awjah and we're going to probably take just the first wajj We'll take the first watch, inshallah ta'ala, and conclude with that for this, this day. He says the first watch, fi ma'na and ibadah. This is the meaning of worship. The meaning of worship. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we're going to make a request from the brothers at Abu Risala that they allow me to be an admin on the group because we're going to put some test questions uh, on, this t- on the Telegram channel. We're going to put some test questions, inshallah ta'ala, for review. Uh, on the um, on the telegram to ensure that the people are able to grasp the information in Shalom So, um, now the ma'na of ibadah, the meaning of worship, the meaning of worship. Ilamu an ibadah laha haqiqatani, haqiqatun lugawiya wa haqiqatun shariya. Know that worship has two realities: the linguistic reality. And the legislative reality. Nam haqiqa tu al-lugawiya aw al-ma'na al-lugawiya bil ibadah. So therefore, the linguistic reality or the linguistic meaning of ibadah, it is min al-ta'bid. It comes from the word al-ta'bid, meaning to subjugate someone, to subjugate someone or something, and to make it subservient to the one who has subjugated it. Wa huwa al-tadlil wa al-tasheer. It is lowering. And uh, it is lowering and humbling. Women who tariqun mu'abbad. From that word, you have the word tariq mu'abbad, meaning the beaten path. The, the beaten path is the pathway that is mudallal, is seri alay. It has become trodden and uh, flattened and lowered due to frequent travel upon it. Due to frequent travel upon it. Now, he says, Uyusama, and it is, uh, na, Uyusama, man is turaqqa fil harb abdan. The one who has been enslaved or uh, is captured during war is called an ad because he is dhulil lil khidma. He has been subjugated and made to serve those who have captured him. So for that reason, he's called abd. As for the Legislative reality or the legislative meaning, it, and then what is intended from it, or afwan the huwa al murad min in that like al kutub wa al rusul. It is that which is intended by the revelation of books and the sending of messengers. Shaykh Abadi says, "I'm going to repeat this: the legislative meaning. It is al murad min in that al kutub." That which is intended by the revelation of books and the sending of the messengers. And the most comprehensive of that which has been said regarding its definition is that which is mentioned by Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Is that which is mentioned by Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. And this is in his book Al Ubudiyah. When he defined ibadah, and we ask the people memorize this definition if you can, inshallah ta'ala. He said, Al ibadah ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbu Allahu wa yardahu min al aqwali wal a'mali al zahira wal batina. Ibadah ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbu Allahu. ويرضاه من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة. In English, worship is a comprehensive term for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, from statements and actions apparent and hidden. Worship 
is a comprehensive term for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from statements and actions both apparent and hidden. Naam, this is the most comprehensive of definitions for ibadah, for worship. So by way of this definition, we know that what we're doing right now by seeking knowledge about the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal is ibadah. And in all acts of worship, and intention is key. Intention is key. Our intention must be pure for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Shu'abedi continues, that this definition it is comprehensive and it cuts off all other ambiguities and no one can deviate uh, from it and no one can and it can hinder its comprehension for everything that Allah has, has everything that Allah loves he commands with it for who are even ibadah. So it is therefore worship. And everything that Allah does not love, then He has prohibited it. So therefore, abandoning that is worship. So by way of this, you know that worship bearing this definition comprises in acting the commands which tinab and manhiyat and avoiding the prohibitions because those things that, are, that Allah has commanded with are beloved to him and those things that he has prohibited are things which he things which he detests we'll conclude with this inshallah uh, in Allah in Allah Ta'ala's best we have um, a few asila uh, I believe the brothers um, have the questions over. So if the brothers want to um, deal with those questions, we can deal with them now, inshallah. Uh, may Allah grant you goodness. Um, we are really grateful for the time of your very skills. Barakallahu uh, fikum. Jazakallahu khairan. Can we read the questions as we said? Um, the question says, Assalamu alaikum, Ustaz. May Allah grant you goodness. If an individual purifies his intention before or during Ramadan and fasts solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he does some other ibadah for the sake of other than Allah, and the person gave an example, maybe in his, there was no ikhlas in taraweeh or tahajjud. Is the intention for the fast still valid? Barakallahu fikum. Mentioned in what is authentically reported from the chief of the believers, Umar bin Khattab, actions are by way of the intentions, and everyone shall be rewarded in proportion to what he or she has intended. Uh, and so uh, each action has a separate intention. Each action has a separate intention. Your fast has an intention. Likewise, your prayer has an intention, and likewise, your fa your uh, you know, your sadaqah has an intention. So, if the if a person is, in, is sincere in his fast, and he fasts purely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then his fast is intact, and it will be acceptable as long as he did not engage in any of the nullifiers of the fast. Uh, yet, if a person in his taraweeh, uh, he makes riya in his taraweeh. Or yani, uh, in his sadaqah, or any other his other his other actions, then that action in which his intention has been corrupted is going to be affected. And to add to this, some other scholars have mentioned that uh, that riya it enters into a person's actions one of three times. One of three times. The first time is before the person even does the action. Meaning they start off doing the action for the sake of riyah or sumar, the sake of showing off or uh, the people to hear about him or her doing the action. This action, without doubt, is rejected. And it may come into a person's action while he's doing the action, I mean, in the middle of the action. 
So a person starts off doing the action purely for the sake of Allah and then realizes that people are watching him. His attention shifts and changes. And he begins beautifying the action even more for the sake of the, the eyes of those people who are watching him. Some of the scholars have mentioned that as much of the action that he did for the sake of Allah will be accepted while the other portion is going to be rejected. However, what is correct is that, uh, honey, that when shirk enters into a person's action, it corrupts the action and nullifies it. Just as hadith, yani just as an impurity, uh, when it enters into a person's purification, yani then he has nullified his purification. And so the third time when Riyah comes into a person's action is after the action has been completed. Meaning that a person started off doing the action purely for the sake of Allah, completed the action purely for the sake of Allah. But after he completed the action, people began to praise him for that action and speak well about him. And he was pleased with their praise. He loved their praise. This person, no doubt, is in danger. This person is in danger. Now, uh, from the examples of this is a, a, a khatib who may give a khutbah, for example. And afterwards, the people begin to praise him for his khutbah. Or they begin to praise him for his class that he gave. Or they begin to praise the mujahid who returns back from battle. And so on and so forth. And he, Hassan al-Basri, alayhi rahmatullah, it was said concerning him that he hated for anybody to praise him to his face. But he loved the people to make dua for him. And we know the mention of Allah, and he mentioned the throwing of dust into the face of a person who praises someone and into their face. Uh, so, so without doubt, we say that Riyah and Sum'ah, and Riyah is connected to that which is seen with the eye, with Sum'ah is connected to the summer or that which is heard, and uh, reputation and the likes of this. Uh, these, no doubt, are very dangerous affairs, and the person has to struggle against his soul uh, to repel these things from himself and uh, and ask Allah Ta'ala to make all of his worship purely for the sake of his noble face. Allah was blessed. Uh, Jazakumullah khair, we are grateful, Ustaz. There are a lot of questions that came, but we asked brothers to kindly bear with us as it's almost time for iftar here. Uh, yeah. We would like to conclude here and we say big jazakallah khairan to Allah with teacher Abu Musa Rahmat. Uh, to meet you in our next meeting. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.